don't know me, I'm Gunni. Uh, I've known Christian for many years. If I'm not mistaken, I think I fought my very first fight on his show in 2007. Um, so I guess everybody is pretty warm. So we'll just go straight into the technique. We have an hour, or I have an hour. Uh, I'm gonna go over some guard passing. Uh, a pass we call the Glacier Pass, one of my favorite passes. And uh, it's gonna be more like pressure based. We're gonna work from a situation where you have one leg in and one leg out. Very common uh, situation you, you find yourself in almost every time you roll. And what we're looking for here is to get upper body control uh, and we're gonna kinda slide away into the mouth position. So I like to stay, I like to keep my base pretty low uh, when I'm rolling. I like to stay on my toes though. I prefer being up like this than on my knees most of the time. I feel like I'm more mobile and my uh, advantage when I'm passing guard is my mobility. And his advantage is obviously he can use both of his feet and his hands on me. But I have the mobility and I like to use it so I usually would stay on my feet. So what we're looking for here is this underhook here, but I'm not really fishing the underhook. I'm more focusing on getting this shoulder to his chest. So from this position here, I'll be pushing a little bit, you know, right in his guard. And all I'm looking for is a time where I can pass this frame, because he's gonna be pushing, framing on me. I use my, um, my wrist a lot of times just to flick it a little bit, and then my shoulder goes right down, and then slides up. So I get a little flick just to get my shoulder down, and then I pressure up. This hand, the underhook hand, goes behind his shoulder blade and palm up. That's a very important detail here. The palm comes up like this. My shoulder is pressing then into my own palm. My uh, head goes to the other side. You can see he still has that knee here. My knee slides up and over and I use my shin to create pressure on his groin. This hand now is just going to be work as a block for the other knee. And then to finish up the pass, I slide over and before I don't want to, I don't want to get caught here into this quarter guard position. So what I do to prevent that is I start leaning a little bit to this side and as I push I turn, do the windshield wiper to the mat, and we end up in my own position. You can see um, when we're in this position, when I get down to here, it's very important as well that my hat is on the opposite side of my underhook. That's the, um, that's the seat belt position, and I'm, I'm using my my hand and my head. So I have this hand free. So we're here, we're in this position. What I'm looking for is just a little opening here, past that frame. You do that obviously in the motion and, and connect it with other moves, other passes that you do. But all I'm looking for is to get that shoulder low, get the underhook, and then I'm sliding up into the seat belt position. Now I've got a, a, a very strong control of his upper body. Now this hand can work here now, can hold this. If, if you know the guy is gonna go straight for a half guard, you can just kinda control this leg for a while until you do the windshield wipe over and we're in mount position. See this again or? Switch sides. So here, one in, one out. I know uh, some people like to, you know, stay on their knees and stuff. But for this, for this uh, pass, I would stay up like this. You can maybe put this knee down here if you're very uncomfortable, uh, like this. But the knee that's in the middle needs to be up for this. So we're here, we're working our passing. That little flick with the wrist is nice. That's one of the ways you can get your shoulder, get, get the frame off. 
just to get the shoulder down. Now I'll start going into the glacier. I'm here. I'm putting pressure on his on his groin here, so my uh, uh, my hip, the left side of my hip is going to lie on top of his knee here, and my other chin is pressing down. Now, finish the pass. I push down either with my elbow or my hand. Everything here is tight, so it kind of locks up his upper body. It's hard for him to move. Make to the side. And we're in mount position. Give that a go. Yeah, let's go. So, um, a lot of times when, when we approach this situation where we go in, uh, one, one in, one out, you, you'll find some guys are really good with their uh, like shin shields and, and, and they're just keeping your way so that you can't not even get into a position where you find that you could possibly get your shoulder down. You're just not, their shields, their frames are just too good, they're too like, they, they might not be trying to attack too much, but it's very hard to get near them. Um, so in that situation, a lot of times they'll bring their knee a little bit up. You can see like, as soon as he opens, there's a space that opens in the middle. So we're, that's when we can go through. But sometimes he'll close that off and it's hard to go through then because that, sh that shield is right there. He's also using his hands. You know, he knows what he's doing. It's very difficult for me now to get my, my uh, shoulder down because that shin is just right in front of me. So what I do then is, if I can't go through, I'll try to go around. So this, these are the only two ways to, to pass a guard, is either go over or around, basically. And then we have tons of different ways, you know? Uh, but a lot of times, if I can't do one way, I'll try the other. Or if I can't do a smash pass, I'll try to mix it up and give it a little speed and, and play around with it. So, um, so in this case, we can't get past the first shield, not even to get our shoulder down. We can't get any type of control. So we're gonna have to go back to proper control in the hips before we can even get established any, any control on his upper body. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stay here and we're gonna stay low. You can see my right shoulder now is outside of his shin or, or his knee here. And I'm gonna use that as a hook when I move my whole body to the side, this is where the mobility comes in when you're passing guard. We have the mobility, he, he's gonna be, he's gonna stay put, but I can move really fast to the side because I'm on my feet. So what we're gonna do is a, a little monkey skip, I call it. So we're here and I go like this. So I'm basically moving the whole roll to this side and he's gonna have to catch up with his hips. It's going to be hard, so his knees are probably going to buckle to the side, especially when my uh, shoulder is on the outside. So I'm here, I'm not getting in, his, his shields are too strong. So what I do is I move to the side, I keep my, my uh, shoulder here tight, I move to the side, and as soon as I get to a point like here, I dive in with my head because I want to control that space in between his knee and his head, or his knee and his, and his body. So I go. Do that skip, my head goes in, and my weight comes down, and I'm basically just sprawling. This hand, very important, is very tight, elbow down, shoulder in, and my stomach, uh, I kind of open it up to keep the weight here. I don't want to focus too much on keeping all the weight on him. I want to focus more on the space that I want to dominate. A lot of times when we you know, put all the pressure on here. It's easy for him just to pu push my head out and, and open up that space that I'm actually trying to get to. So, as soon as I get to the side here, I just, uh, I kind of sprawl, put my hips down, and try to dominate this space in here that I'm trying to get to, trying to control. So my head goes down, and I stay like this. Now from here, this is, Depending on how good uh, the guy is, deal with the situation. Sometimes it's a bit of a, you know, we could stay here for a while and he's trying to get his knees up and stuff and you're just kind of riding a, a, and tiring his legs out here. So, but this is very important. This is tight. My head is low. My head is heavy as well. I don't want it to push it up. 
So I'm heavy here, I'm heavy on here, and now this hand is, is a shield, it's like a, a post that I use or, or a block. It's not to push his legs down, it's to keep him where they are and for me to climb over them. So I'm here, I'm here, the block is in, and then slowly I climb up, and you see I pressure his head. That's to get him to look the other way and to get him flattened out, because I, ideally, I would want him like this. So we're here, here, and then I start climbing, climbing, into mount position. So it's a very similar pressure as before, in sense of we have underhook and then we use the head on the other side, but different kind of leg situation. So I'm here, it's pretty blocked. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to get my shoulder in. I can't, his, his uh, frames are too good. So what I do, I use my mobility. I skip to the side. That shoulder, very important on the outside. If I don't have that shoulder and I just skip, his knee just comes out and I don't do very much. So that uh, shoulder is out. And try not to put your hand here. A lot of guys do this because they feel like they can push their leg even more. But what happens, especially in the gi, when we do this, he'll grab my sleeve. And as I try to get anything, the sleeve, it's just gone, you know. And he might, you know, take my back or something or, or I just don't get what I want. So try to keep that safely on this side, just against his hip here. So I skip to the side. I come heavy into that space that I want to control. I sprawl on him, and now I just keep the weight here. And if he, he's trying to lift his legs and stuff, I just keep the weight on the side. Then the lift the small. So he's lifting, he's lifting. And when he, if he commits too much into really, and I have this shield here, if he commits too much and tr try to throw me over this way. So I'm here, and he commits too much. He'll end up throwing me into mount. One more time, Let me switch the angle. So here, and then here, shoulder on the outside, same position as earlier. You can't get closer to him, skip to the side. Put my head down, underhook is here. It's, some people like to keep it high, some people like to keep it low. It's, uh, you'll have to figure that out uh, on your own, which one you like. But I find it mainly, uh, I switch it with who I'm going with. If the guy is really tall, it's hard for me to be all the way up here. And if the guy is short, stocky, maybe I'll go a bit higher than I would otherwise. So I'm here. This elbow is very tight, important. I don't want to get that underhook, because then the whole thing is kind of blown. So keep this tight, but keep sprawl on him here. This little shield that I have is just blocking his knees from coming up. And then slowly, I'm angled. I'm kind of, I'm straight. I'm kind of flat on him. But I, I'm, look at how I'm angled. My head is still on this side. This is, makes it very, very hard for him to sweep me. And also very hard, uh, easy for me to take mount if he goes the circle trying to lift me. So I'm here, I angle myself, and then it's just the crab crawl into mount position. And then you can start your elbows. See that again, or one more time? Okay, so one in, one out. For this one, we have to stay on both feet. If you really struggle with that, uh, um, Sorry, but you, for, for that skip, you're really gonna have to uh, stay on your feet. And so here, and you can see I'm quite low, like my butt is quite low. If I'm up here, see where my shoulder is now, it's hard for me to get that shoulder on the outside. So I'm staying low, it also makes it harder for him to get all kinds of hooks and stuff. If I'm here, maybe he can hook around and mess with me a little bit. If I'm all the way down here, it's harder, my butt is low, I'm heavy, and there's not too much space. So we're here, trying to put the pressure in, but the shin is, it's, you know, it's there, and it's, it's hard to get through it. So 
I'm going to skip to the side, move my head in the middle, line it up, start putting the weight on it. This leg comes out wide for balance. If you go straight away into trying to push, pushing my head, trying to lift, get the knees back up, you know. So this leg is out here for balance. I start angle myself, making him crooked, and I'm, I'm kind of facing him straight. And then we climb up. And like I said, like in a in a match or in a, in a, in a roll, in a fight, once you get to the side there, it might take a little bit of time to actually get into mount. That might be a little bit of a fight. And then you can, of course, switch into different things. Windshield wipe your leg and go to the side control. And, or I, I, I'd recommend, I really like this position. So if you get really good at staying on that side, it's a very tough situation for the other guy. It's tiring for the legs and the hips and to be trying to lift and lift and lift because he's already in a very bad position. So I'd recommend stick with it for a little while. Okay, give that a go. Okay, so uh, that's basically uh, my class. It takes a lot of time to do two techniques when there's so many people, you know. Uh, but just before we finish up and, and how hard those is, is there any questions on um, this material or maybe some other questions? Was it was it working for you guys? Yeah. With no resistance, at least. <laughs> Maybe if you could show some defensive rules against this. Oh, not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, 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 that would be a full, full class, definitely. But like always, you know, great frames and, uh, and good hit movement will get you out of a lot. But yeah, to show defensive positions would be another class, basically. Uh, because sometimes it was a bit, I mean, we could always get down the roof because it's. <laughs> Training, but I mean, uh, it's is it difficult for you to get under How do you? Yeah, that's definitely a fight, you know, uh, to get get a proper seatbelt yeah. or uh, an underhook position. That's yeah. for sure uh, not an easy thing to do against a good opponent. Oh. And you have to be tricky, and there there are some like little uh, tricks and details to uh, for for different situations to get it, like that one little flick, and then focus on getting. The, the shoulder down instead of trying to reach for the underhook, yeah. uh, I find that uh, brings a lot of success to, to this pass for me anyway. And then on on the other on the other pass, a lot of times when the people will be keeping their elbow low to pummel in the underhook, when you're smashing the knees together, you have to keep your underhook a lot lower. Obviously, in the gi, you can kind of grab the belt or the gi and and really torque your elbow in there so it's very hard for them and hopefully climb your leg up faster than they can actually get the under it. I, I was saying earlier that you know we, we have these problems with certain passes or, or something you know what if he's framing here what if he's a lot of times when when you're in a situation you're in, you're in some sort of control and somebody is framing uh, or doing something that's annoying and it's you feel like it's taking the perfect situation away. A lot of times, well, the reason why we uh, lose the position is because we're focusing so much on what they're doing, that, that, that push, that we actually start losing all the other controls that we had, which was a tight underhook, you know, a tight elbow, that control over the knees, just because uh, somebody's pushing our head, or if they're going for the underhook, we start focusing so much on that that our weight comes over and we get bumped a little bit. You know, so a lot of times when, when they're fighting something, you have to acknowledge it, of course, and, and try to get around it, but don't lose your other controls. Uh, make sense? All right, that's class, thank you.